Okay, lecture 9, we'll talk about uh, sterile filtration. So as you said before, there are many different um, methods uh, that you can use to uh, filtrate your product, drug product, right? But if you're dealing with uh, the biological molecules uh, as your injectable drug, uh, many of those sterilization methods would not work because they may um, denature or uh, inactivate your API molecules. So then what are you left with? Maybe you're just left with the filtration method to sterilize your product. So normally final uh, sterilization method is a filtration method. So that's the importance of filtration. So uh, among uh, the, all other different uh, sterilization methods, filtration is probably one of the most commonly used uh, sterilization method uh, in the biopharmaceutical industry. Okay, so it's, it's used a lot. So that's why you need to understand the principle of filtration. Okay, so sterilization, sterilization by filtration is considered a cold method of sterilization because it does not uh, use uh, heat, uh, you know, dry heat or steamed heat. Uh, so it can, but still it can remove or separate out microorganisms from the rest of the product. Um, this diagram shows you how uh, filtration would work. It could work um, tangential flow. Uh, if you have your you know, main flow going parallel or tangential to the filter, it, you, you can call it tangential flow filtration or cross flow filtration. Or if you can supply uh, the main flow uh, totally against the membrane directly, uh, you, you consider it as a uh, direct flow filtration, normal flow filtration, or dead end filtration. Okay, it's considered as dead end because you get clogging up right away. So although you can filter out some, you cannot filter out a lot. So that's a dead end filtration. Anyway, uh, there are two different uh, methods of filtering uh, out your uh, molecules. Uh, so this diagram showed you. Um, I guess, uh, what is that filling uh, operation done in the class A or class B instead of the, I guess, filling machine is class A outside, maybe class B. And then class C, here's a formulation tank. And see, there's a filter. Uh, so that's a final filtration. That's what is de de uh, demonstrated in this diagram. So after the formulation is done, there's that final uh, filter sterilization happening. Okay. And then, then formulated and filtered uh, your drug is uh, going to the filling machine. So again, so filtration used as a final filtration that FDA wants to see. Okay. Types of the filters uh, based on uh, what filters you use. Uh, your filtration can be used for various purposes. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Uh, if you a filter has a large pore size, the size of the pores are typically between 10 and 200 micron uh, size range. Uh, we normally use those filters as maybe clarifying filters or pre-filters. Okay, so clarifying in, uh, means what? Clarification is a step between your upstream uh, processing and the downstream processing, uh, through which you can remove large chunky. Uh, things like cells or you know um, you know uh, the aggregates and things like that so these filters can be used to remove pollens and particles and some bacterial cells that you don't want okay and then uh, microfilters have a pore size between 0.1 to 10 microns uh, normally very efficient to remove uh, any kind of living uh, contaminants including bacterial cells, yeast cells, colloidals. Okay? So if you use a filter that has maybe pore size of 0.2 micron, uh, that's normally used as a microfilter or sterile filtration. Okay? And then if your pore size is smaller, between 0.001 to 0.1 micrometer, uh, then you consider that as ultra filter. Okay? Then you can use them to remove viruses or large organic compounds uh, that are larger than maybe 10 kilodalton sizes. And finally, nanofilters have much smaller pore sizes, smaller than 0 0.001 micron, uh, which is about 0.1 uh, nanometer. So that's why they're considered nanofilters. 
and they can be used to remove small organic compounds or ions. Okay, understand the importance of the pore size found on your filters. And then, uh, so this uh, chart shows you uh, how things are removed by uh, the filters with different pore sizes. We talked the microfilter being the stereo filter because it can remove most of the living cells, including bacterial cells, eukaryotic cells, or plants and whatnot. Okay, so normally microfilters have uh, pore size of 0.1 or 0.2 microns. So that's where you can remove all the living cells, except for maybe endotoxin pyrogens or viruses. They are small enough to go through microfilters. So you cannot remove pyrogens and viruses using uh, microfilters. Okay? If you want to remove those, you have to use something like ultrafilters or maybe nanofilters. Okay? So again, clarifying filters have large pore sizes. They're used as depth or proof filters. Depth filter means uh, you have a thick filter where your uh, unwanted material will be trapped on the on the filter. So think about uh, maybe a scotch pad you know, looking uh, filter shape. So uh, your uh, I guess the filtering out material will be trapped there, maybe retentate. Okay, so normally used to remove dirt, pollens, some bacteria, and most other particles that you do not want. Okay, these filters are typically made with cellulose fibers, uh, diatomaceous earth, uh, glass fibers, uh, sand gravels, and polypropylene uh, yarns. Okay, uh, they are very efficient in removing dirt from solutions. And the pre-filters, again, uh, or surface filters are commonly used to simply to pro protect the membrane um, microfilter uh, from clogging too quickly. So you uh, use pre-filter first to uh, remove large chunky things that can clog up your microfilter. So after removing those first using your pre-filter, then you use a microfilter to remove uh, contaminants. Okay, so that's what the function of pre-filter is. So examples of uh, materials used as pre-filters include uh, cellulose ester and heat-bounded polypropylene fibers. Okay, and then microfilters, uh, mostly commonly used uh, filtration because it's a sterile filter because they are pore size 0.1 to 10 micron. Normally 0.2 is the universal microfilter uh, that can efficiently remove uh, bacterial cells, yeast cells, and colloidal forms. Um, they are used as a sterilizing filter, like I said, in the industry. Uh, they have a rated porosity of 0.2 micron or small low. Um, so, typically the formulated products must be filtered prior to being filled in the final container closure system. That's probably what you saw in this diagram, right? So formulation, after that's done, you do the microfiltration to remove, you know, uh, contaminants. That's uh, probably a final filtration taking place before your uh, vial filling. Okay. Uh, so the question is then: Is that 0.2 micron filter really efficient enough to eliminate all microorganisms? Um, mostly, except for some exceptions like viruses, pyrogens and uh, some microplasma. Uh, we'll talk about microplasma later on, but you know they may be smaller than 0.2 micron, then they could present challenges. Okay, and they're made out of cellulose ester, nylon, uh, polysulfone, PS, PVDF, or poly uh, tetra fluoroethylene, so different materials are available. And then ultra filter, uh, they have pore size of 0 0.001 to uh, 0 0.1 micron size, and they're used to remove viruses, okay, because viruses should not be there, uh, used as a uh, virus removal tool. Um, and then large organic compounds that have uh, 10 kilodalton or over uh, sizes, okay. Uh, they are used in upstream manufacturing for cell harvesting and buffer exchange. Diafiltration, you can use ultrafilter. Okay. And then nanofilter, much smaller pores, 
less than 0 0.001 micron. They are used to remove small organic compounds, ionic forms, and they're used in reverse osmosis. Rem remember that term, reverse osmosis, it's one of the most um, commonly used water purification system. Okay, it's a very efficient filter to remove whatever the contaminants you don't want from your water. And then polymeric filter materials are broadly classified as either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Understand those terms, right? Hydrophilic meaning uh, they have polarity, they can bind with water. Hydrophobic, they don't like water because they don't have polarity. Uh, hydrophilic filters, uh, wet first because the hydrophilic they can uh, be used with water um, so they are used for cell filtration of aqueous solution makes sense hydrophobic photophobic filters do not wet uh, spontaneously uh, they are used in cell filtration of gases or solvents uh, strong acid and alkaline solution so you know if you think about your bioreactor when you set up and you pump in maybe oxygen gas is there right uh, when you pump in oxygen gases, you have to set up a um, filter. So only filtered oxygen gas can pump, be pumped into your bioreactor. So you use those hydrophobic filters for that purpose. The mechanism of removing particulates uh, and microorganisms. So when you use filtration for that, how do filters trap those unwanted materials? Okay, so The principle is they may trap uh, those materials as a sieve okay or screen or they entrap so they, these are the physical mechanism of how your filter would work so when the filter retains a particle by sieving that means they are providing kind of channel where uh, materials will be trapped okay that's what sieving is um, Okay. And the entrapment occurs when a particle smaller than the dimension of the passageway, the pore size, uh, becomes lodged in a turn or impacted on the surface of the passageway. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's just get trapped in there because there's so much things in there. Okay. And electrostatic attraction depends on the materials of the filter and then there may be electrostatic based interaction that can happen so absorption on the surface may happen so so there are many ways of uh, filtering uh, maybe trapping or capturing uh, the molecules that you don't want okay so uh, again so entrapment is getting stuck in there absorption meaning if there are the molecules making of your filter they may go through the small holes right and then the sieving you know so going running through uh, all those uh, channels between the molecules that's what sieving is so this diagram shows you different uh, mechanisms of how you can trap uh, your particles that you don't want through your filter uh, physical factors that can affect your filter efficiency okay of course um, shape charge size you know source where the material is coming uh, from they all they are all important okay uh, filter material uh, filter composition if they have a charge or not charge that, that's important a membrane thickness okay uh, filter thickness uh, slows down the flow of course which affects the absorption and filter porosity uh, the smaller the porosity is the greater the retention of the particle makes sense and then temperature also affects the filtration efficiency uh, microbial growth and that affects the surface tension of liquid being filtered so yeah that's a physical uh, effect you know and then type of fluid solution being filtered is that liquid that's going through your filter very viscous sticky then it may slow down the filtration process and you need to apply a higher pressure uh, so you know it depends on the you know physical condition of the solution and your filtration will be affected and then applied pressure are you applying high enough pressure to run your material through the filter flow rate again how fast your liquid is going through and time all those things are important factors in your filtration setup okay